in a newly uncovered export license issued by the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission on February 21st of this year, we see the United States, NRC, issuing a licensee, TN Americas, who changed their name from Transport Logistics International to TN Americas, Transport Logistics International, also known as TLI, was caught up in a scandal just a few years back involving the Russians. Anyways, we see this export license given to TN Americas to export over 32 million kilograms of uranium in the form of uranium hexafluoride to the Russian Federation. The Russian Federation's uranium and radioactive importing and exporting agency, Texnabexport, also known as Tenex, is the country's sole radioactive importer and exporter under the Rosatom nuclear agency. But not only is TN Americas LLC out of Kevel, Kentucky, which is near Paducah, which is the storage and shipper of the UF-6, uh, the only party to export. As we can see here, Honeywell International in Metropolis, Illinois, will be involved in the conversion of this material and yet the owner and seller of the UF-6 in Paducah, Kentucky is USEC, United States Enrichment Corporation, which also operates under the name Centrus. Though USEC, also known as Centrus, does not only operate out of the Paducah gaseous diffusion plant in Paducah, Kentucky. They also operate out of the Piketon, Ohio Portsmouth gaseous diffusion plant. Though, what are American corporations like Honeywell International, TLI, who recently changed their name to TN Americas LLC, and USAC Centris, what are they doing shipping radioactive material to a country of which America is supporting and funding a war against. If we go to Centris's own website, centrisenergy.com, click on Investor Relations and we can check out the company's own SEC filings, which is the Securities and Exchange Commission. When having a look at these records, we come across something interesting. Although the joint U.S. and Russian program known as Megatons to Megawatts ended in 2013 after 20 years, we see in one of Centris's own SEC registration statements their dependence on 10X or Texnab export and the risks related to the war in Ukraine that could directly or indirectly impact their ability to obtain, deliver, or sell low enriched uranium under their 10X supply contract. We see here easily, in their own admittance, their dependency on 10X and the Russian Federation. But what is the 10X supply contract? Well, we see here again in one of Centris's own SEC filings, the 10X supply contract is the long-term supply of SWU, which is separate work units, contained in low enriched uranium, signed by the United States Enrichment Corporation, which is USEC slash Centris, with 10X in 2011. 
On page 21 of the same document, we see more in-depth revelations written by centrists themselves. Section 11, under commitments and contingencies, commitments under SWU purchase agreements, we see 10X named as a commitment. The Russian government-owned entity 10X is a major supplier of separate work units to the company. Under the 2011 10X supply contract, the company purchases SWU contained in low enriched uranium received from Russian 10X, and the company delivers natural uranium to 10X for the LEU's uranium component. The LEU that the company obtains from 10X is subject to quotas under the Russian suspension agreement and U.S. legislation adopted in 2020 and to other restrictions applicable to commercial Russian low-enriched uranium. Further, the ability of the company or 10X to perform under the 10X supply contract is vulnerable to one, sanctions or restrictions that might be imposed by Russia, the US, or other countries as a result of the war in Ukraine, or otherwise to customers and other parties who may object to receiving or handling Russian low-enriched uranium, or separate work units, or three suppliers and services seeking to limit their involvement with business related to Russia. The 10X supply contract originally was signed with com commitments through 2022, but was modified in 2015 to give the company the right to reschedule certain quantities of separate work units of the original commitments into the period 2023 and beyond. In return for the purchase of additional separate work units in those years, the company has exercised this right to reschedule in each year through December 31st, 2022. As a result of exercising this right to reschedule, the company has purchased commitments that could extend through 2028.